Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm reading today for Virgo Energy. Let me just be a perfectionist for a second Virgo and move the camera. There we go, that's a little bit more aligned. <laughs> um, so he hello Virgos, how are you doing? Uh, I hope I hope you're doing well. The reading's telling me that you may be a little bit down in the dumps, a little bit stuck in your own head. You can see by the cards that you've got some challenge cards. But I want to say you are moving in the right direction. You are making progress. So uh, let's let's check in with Virgo. Um, what I'm getting so far is there could be something speci specifically around like father energy. So um, it's coming through like maybe your own father, the you know, the weight of your own father's expectations on you. There's this thing about like breaking the mold and uh yeah let me just get my notes so um the first thing that i was getting was like it's like simulation theory so it's like i don't know oh actually that makes sense now like simulation theory like running a simulation over and over again which makes sense in terms of uh generational patterning generational behavior like uh you know being like your father like your grandfather that kind of thing uh it can be maternal as well but it's coming through as patriarchal because of the emperor but just know that you can switch and reverse it we've also got the high priestess here as well which can be kind of like mother grandmother so uh do take it as it resonates it's really just talking about like um you know like what's come before what were your parents like what were your grandparents like what traditions and beliefs have they passed down to you so um yeah you've got this song by billy elish i don't want to be you anymore um which says i was made uh, was i made from a broken mold so it could also be talking about dna and um uh, things that are passed down to you in terms of like um maybe even illnesses or you know inherited illnesses or uh, like um either mental illnesses or physical illnesses you know if your if somebody in your ancestry had some sort of uh maybe problem maybe um mm, okay they're giving me a word that I'm, i don't personally like to use um uh, okay before i say it my personal belief system is that a lot of things like neurodiversity yes it's it can create a lot of problems and it can make people feel like they're not good enough because they're trying to fit broken mold okay they're giving me broken mold again like maybe break the mold so what happens again i worked in schools i worked with children with adhd and different you know um, autism and things like this um it's 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 not it's neurodiversity, right? It's just a, a different way that the brain works. I always say it's like, um, you know, it's like asking a dolphin to climb a tree. Like, so a lot of the time, the school system, um, the society, the way we have structures set up, like to do with the way we run our lives, are um, are created um, to support neurotypical people and then your people who have some kind of a neurodiversity or uh, learning. Um, uh, like a different way of learning and things like this um you know that mainstream society is often not set up to, set up to support them so they feel like they're rejected by that or that they're not good enough so the word that they were giving me was defect so an inherited defect i want to say is it a defect or were you made from a broken mold or do you need to make break the mold of society to make society adapt to what i feel like is increasing diagnosis of neurodiversity it's like more and more people are recognizing that there's nothing wrong with them right they they are not broken they're just um you know their brains wired differently it's just a different way of existing like a dolphin and a, and a monkey right it's funny you've got gorillas here um yeah, you've got the song Dare by Gorillaz. Um, and it says, uh, I'm getting Gorillaz references quite a lot. I also saw, you know, the advert, the Dairy Milk advert with the gorilla that's playing the drums. I also saw that yesterday. So uh, Gorillaz has come up quite a few times for me this week. Uh, so um, it makes me think of um, when I used to go to the zoo with my mum, there was a big, I mean, it wasn't a gorilla, it was a big orangutan. Like it was the big, like old, man like daddy massive orangutan um and my mum would always go there's granddad say hi to granddad like joking right so um again i don't know maybe somebody's parents have a kind of like i don't know silverback quality to them um but it says um it's right okay so this going back to like simulation theory um 
hang on, I just want to try and do this in an orderly fashion, made from a broken mould. So um, she says in that, that song, tell the mirror what you know she's heard before, I don't want to be you anymore. So I want to say the mirror is um, a reflection of yourself, a projection of yourself, and a projection of your parents onto you. It's like your parents' expectations. So this idea of I don't want to be you anymore, I don't want to... I don't want to try and fit the mold that you expect from me is the way it's coming through and it also see, says um you also got the song little star by Khalees, which says if it seems like i'm shining it's probably a reflection of something you already are so there's something here with this emperor you've got like the dragon the emperor the elk so i think you are dealing with somebody possibly for some of you um that you see as very very successful so again this could be you've got like a famous father a famous grandfather somebody in your ancestry who was very successful i also have this i have a, a businessman in my uh, family tree who who was very successful um and you kind of feel like you know why hasn't that why hasn't that strand of dna passed down to me why am i not successful and running my own business like you know some things are inherited some things aren't and some things are literally just by chance so the in that song uh, little star by Khalees, it says just keep trying and trying um you know it's is the grinding is tiring but don't let it stop you from trying right or smiling so you've got here in the underlying this eight of pentacles which is like stepping stones it's really a card about perfectionism and doing something over and over and again until you get it right so it's like practice makes perfect kind of energy i want to say not in everyone's case again i did i was working with children with neurodiversity and there's some things that some children just cannot do right or it's um, you know, no matter how hard they try, there is a, um, maybe perhaps it just does not come naturally to them. It's, it, you know, the grind to get something right, the amount of effort it takes to get something right is, um, I want to say sometimes almost torturous for these children. I think it's, I think it's brutal. I think it's cruel because it's so difficult for them. So, that's not to say people can't do something and like put a huge amount of effort into it but I think you know there's there's what am I trying to say here because I don't want to say I don't want to say like you know what I don't want to say is if you have any kind of like neuro uh, you know any kind of like uh handicap or something like that that you can't also succeed because obviously you can um you know this is why we have like you know the special olympics and things like this the um what's it called what do they call that I can't think what they call it now, but you know what I'm saying, right? Um, where, you know, which is incredibly inspiring. Um, and I want to say when people have the drive and ambition to do that, then it's coming from within, right? It's something that they have that drive and ambition to do. They have something to prove. But where you have a child who's like, I don't understand this. This does not come naturally to me. It's upsetting me. I hate it. Is it right to kind of keep forcing them to do that thing? Uh, I want to say encouragement rather than force you know there's there's a tipping point there so that could definitely be for some something for somebody as well um yeah if it seems like i'm shining it's probably a reflection of something you already are so again it could be talking about inherited success so if you think about celebrities who um you know the kids are celebrities you know supermodels the kids are supermodels it's like if you're doing something because it's like maybe you've got some sort of position uh, not for all of you, but for some of you, it could be like, maybe you've got some kind of success or position. And it's like, um, did I get this position because my dad owns the company? Or did I get, would I have got this position based on my own merit anyway? So there could be something like that. It's like, maybe, you know, people who have inherited success or, you know, people who are successful by chance, perhaps, because this has a thing about... Um, it's all a matter of timing, right? It's just it's getting your lucky break, being at the right place at the right time, you know, um, catching a wave, if you like. It's like, it, it's got this question of like, was I just lucky or did I deserve this? Is is coming through for some of you. Um, okay, now that now I've wrapped that up, back to the simulation theory thing. Going beyond theory is what I heard. Like simulation theory, but going beyond theory. So it's like, 
put it into practice. So if this is simulation in terms of uh, repeating the patterns of your parents, it's almost like um, DNA coding or blueprinting or something like that, where it's like, uh, because we are born into a certain place at a certain time, within a certain family, within a certain social structure, are we, are we kind of cursed or blessed to, to repeat those patterns? Or can we break the mold? So if you have some kind of theory in your mind about this, like if you have some kind of ideas about um, breaking uh, patterns of behavior, especially things like, I'm just thinking about people I know who are Virgo, like uh, people perhaps, this could be not direct to you, right? It could not necessarily, like again, this emperor, this father energy, it doesn't have to be your father or your husband or you as a father. It could also be somebody you know who's dealing with their own father. So it could be saying, if this person has a toxic father, Father, maybe your partner has a toxic father or like your, something like this um can I can I break that can I break that cycle um and it's saying don't just have a theory about it put it into practice is the way it's coming through so I was also kind of getting play within a play and book within a book book within a book goes back to the um tell me anything reading that I did recently where it's like uh trees are knowledge you know books within a book um reading a book is like peeking into someone else's psyche and the idea of like passing knowledge with books um I had some more stuff about that it was really interesting and then uh play within a play so this was coming through with a film with uh, Michael Caine in I can't remember what the film was called. I've not been able to find it anywhere and I really want to watch it again. And it's a film I've been looking for for years because I saw it when I was about maybe like 11 or 12, this film. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really, really clever film. And I mean, I might watch it again. It might be one of those things where you watch it again and you're like, why did I like this? But at the time I was really impressed by it. I thought it was really, really clever. Noises Off, 1992 Noises Off um, with Michael Caine. I think it's Michael Caine. I've got face blindness, but... <laughs> um not a lot of people know that so um yeah so uh, which is a play within a play it's like a, a film that's about a play right <laughs> so um there's this multi-level multi-dimensional quality to your reading okay let's go so what do we have please what do we have for virgo can we get some more information on this reading for virgo please Oh, oh, the animal. You and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals, so let's do it like we do on the Discovery Channel. And that came out for me. When I did my practice reading, I did about maybe like three practice readings. And um, one of them, because I'm using three Kim Kranz decks, I'm using the Archetypes deck, the uh, Animal deck, and the uh, Tarot deck. And I, at first I had both these decks put in together, like, and, you know, like two decks in one, like one mega deck, um, and was shuffling. But if you look, they're not quite the same size. So I was finding I was getting more of the animal deck than the, um, than the tarot deck. And one time when I did the reading, it was all animals all animals and I had the animal card I had something else like shapeshifter or something so I was like is this like werewolves or something <laughs> like what's going on here but it was all animals and then uh, someone referenced that song and I got it immediately I was like that's why they were showing me mammals and there's a tv show isn't there mammals with that guy that does the he's like a tv host <laughs> He does stuff in cars. Uh, that guy. He's, um, yeah, I sh I've not watched it yet, but there's a TV show called Mammal. So that was going up quite a lot for me. I don't know. It's kind of like your dark side, right? The animal within, your wild side, your instinctive nature. Um, and the animal does break the mold, right? The animal is a card about um, doing the right thing. It's giving me that cigarettes after sex song. Do the right thing, do the wrong thing, baby. You're the white swan in my photograph. And didn't I just see the swan? Yeah. Okay, so somebody else got a reading. I'm going to have to actually just double check. Hold on. Okay, it was Gemini. Um, Gemini's reading. I was channeling that song. Uh, do the right thing, do the wrong thing, baby. You're the black swan in the photograph was the way I was hearing it in Gemini's reading. And you've got this black swan here. So father of cups could be a Scorpio, doesn't have to be. Uh, but yeah, again, with this father energy, the black swan in the photograph. So maybe there's something about somebody who's in a photograph. Um, maybe it's something like black sheep of the family or somebody who had a... Maybe somebody who had a reputation for being a little bit, a little bit cloak and dagger is what I'm hearing. A little bit 
See, I've been getting this a lot and it's coming through quite a lot this week has been like, it's one of those things that I've always got a sense of, like ever since I've been doing readings, I've kind of got a sense of this. And only now is it kind of coming to the forefront and actually stepping out into the readings. So this idea of somebody who, um, you know, maybe uh, with the emperor, maybe they are some kind of like CEO or a businessman or uh, upstanding member of society, like maybe a politician or, you know, some kind of like um, civic role where they have to have a prestigious reputation right it's like they're an important person but it's like they've got this animal side to them they've got this um it's like a sense of like there's another side to this person that's hidden from the public um is the way it's coming through especially with the animal so then questioning your own animal right so perhaps this person had some toxic traits perhaps this person drank behind closed doors or maybe they were a terrible father right like um hello beep beep drunk shout out cappies um it is thursday actually when i'm recording this so it's like maybe you know maybe this person was a little bit brutal in the home you know talking about your sun sign and your moon sign your sun sign is really your sun sign is like what people perceive you as, like your reputation, your persona. Your moon sign is like what you like behind closed doors, what you like with family, what you like behind the scenes. So, because it's hidden, right? And the thing is, I'm just going to keep going because it's, you know, tradition, way to the beep beep cappy drug. Um, so, <laughs> it's getting really loud. I don't know, maybe warning signs. So, I want to say it could be something like where you're questioning, you know, you've, if this person, maybe you found out about this person, maybe they're in your family tree in some sort of way, and maybe there's something a bit, a bit off about them. And then you start to question, am I also like this? Do, have I inherited this, this, uh, this wolf within? Have I inherited this dark side? I want to say a lot of this, um, is, is, uh, kind of catastrophic catastrophic thinking right a lot of this is mental a lot of this is what if what if what if rather than it actually being the reality so um i want to say we could be delving into the area of like intrusive thoughts everyone has intrusive thoughts it's it's very 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 common you know sometimes we have you know thoughts that that we think oh my god i'm so glad i didn't act on that but you seem to be going what if i acted on it and really focusing on it so google intrusive thoughts and uh steps to take if you're having them if this is is um how you've been affected but you've got all this i mean look at this and you're hiding it as well i want to say you are i want to say this is a really deep internal fear we could be talking about we could be talking about lilith placements here um oh i suddenly felt really sick i felt my stomach turn over i'm getting the same feeling of like scorpio's reading i don't know maybe you're dealing with a really toxic scorpio because when i did scorpio's reading i was like i know this isn't any of you like it doesn't feel like the people coming to my reading it feels like somebody that somebody's dealing with who's like a really toxic kind of like scorpio father figure um i don't want to be you anymore um i want to break the mold right so it's like Again, it could be like somebody who's got some kind of father figure who is just thinking about like the Virgos I know and like they've got great dads. <laughs> but um, again, it doesn't have to be dad. It's it's again, it could even be like an older brother or um, even like a friend with some kind of amount of power and influence. And it's like trying to be like them or it could even just be your own concept of what it means to be successful, your own idea of like perfection. Um, that emperor is really giving me like family tree though like um i don't know it's almost like male peers or something like that um i just need to take a break hold on all right so virgo you are very very uh you overthink you're a sign that overthinks you're a sign that over analyzes you're a sign that questions and everything and uh, like Gemini, right? So this could be something about being ruled by Mercury because we had that Gemini shared song. Um, so, and the, this idea of like the mirror, right? Twins, maybe you've got a twin. Um, so, I 
I want to say this is very, very hidden. What I was finding when I was shuffling the cards is there were um, sometimes when I shuffle, a card flips out and it goes back in like this. And that tells me, it's like a, the way I communicate with my guides, it's like this is being hidden, this is kept hidden. Uh, this is a secret, right? It's like we do want you to take the card, that's why it's flipped, but we're hiding it to show you that this is, is something that's secretive, it's something that's hidden. So again, it's this idea of like... Um, somebody suffering in silence or somebody maybe having some depression or some mental health issues just because we've got basically what's telling me this is we've got all these swords here which are really 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 i mean you can look at the images and how dark they are like this is really bad mental health and the frog as well and the frog gives me why does it always rain on me so it's kind of like a depression sign for me um again i am not medically trained i can't diagnose you with anything um i'm a tarot card reader i'm reading pretty cards um if any of this is resonating for you if you have any concerns about your own mental health i would really encourage you to get support now if you can go to your doctor um which is obviously uh a really you know it's going to give you legitimate advice hopefully you could go to uh, a counselor a, a psychologist um some kind of help online um you also if you if you need to you can also contact um, anonymous mental health services if you just google mental anonymous mental health services in your area you should be able to get in contact with some kind of charity or organization that can help you um anonymously um that's not going to be for everybody some of you you just some of you are just really trying to meet expectations of yourself and those that I want to say there is an element of projection, you know, like I want to be the person that people expect me to be, but you're project you're you're projecting other people's you're projecting your own expectations of yourself um onto other people as though I think if you actually speak to people, people will be a lot easier on you than you are yourself. I think you're like, if I don't do this, this person won't love me, where actually that person loves you and doesn't want you to be so hard on yourself. But you, it's, it's very internalized, whatever's going on for you, I want to say. So again, we were talking about the animal, which is kind of like your own dark side, your own wildness inside. So the ten of soul, uh, the ten of... Oh, this is the Ten of Wands. I'm saying it's... I don't know why I'm seeing it as the Ten of Swords. You've got the Ten of Swords. I don't know. I'm almost seeing it as like double Ten of Swords. Like really, really dark. Um, and like that image is so brutal. Like it makes me feel so uncomfortable. It's... it's It really does tap into fears, right? Um, and so it's... I want to say it's like your mind is like a thicket of thorns, right? Your mind is like... Like battling your own psyche is like fighting through... A forest of thorns in the dark right now it's like got this real prickliness to it um oh, it's such a shame i had such a beautiful reading a, a beautiful practice reading in between leo and scorpio and it, it's i'm gonna call it the lighthouse reading and it had a very similar like very dark energy but we also had the sun and the lighthouse card and um something else as well and it really had this feeling of like going towards the light but moving through the darkness to get to the light and it was it, it i just feel like it could have something for you as well but here this is this is this is really bad mental health this is really somebody really really suffering you know from their own fears from their own um anxieties from their own just beating themselves up really and then this ten of wands which is this heavy burden so it could be that you've got a lot of responsibilities especially if you are the emperor right you've got a lot of responsibilities you've got a lot of duties you've got a lot of people relying on you and this is such a heavy burden that it's actually making you really really stressed and mentally unwell um but you're trying to hide it right you're trying to hide it for others i want to say but it's really showing here with this frog in the center of your reading this is this is really down in the dumps and getting quite emotional about it. Now, one of the good cards here is that you have this right here on this first rose. Um, you have this very healing card. So um, this, the four of swords traditionally is somebody who just needs a bit of rest. Somebody just who needs a really good night's sleep, maybe a couple of days off, maybe you know just going pottering around the garden or going for a walk. It's like, or a long hot bath, right? It's like... Uh, basically it's two these two cards are both show me because they're both swords it's like they both say there's mental health here there's something about like this person being stressed or anxious or 
worse, right? So the Four of Swords is like, um, if you catch it early, um, it's quite a quick fix. You know, it's, it's just a few nights sleep or whatever to get you back into good health. But here, it's showing me... Um, uh, it's almost like something about like the overlay of these right with them both having like a hoofed animal i want to say it's something to do with okay again just looking at the age of these two animals um it's something to do with the the generations again right so it's like if if this is if you have a child who is showing signs of anxiety or stress or bad mental health issues and you have really bad mental health issues, it's like there's something about like if we'd have caught it early, if we'd have if this had been dealt with properly in childhood, then you know, maybe it wouldn't have gone like this or something like this, or but it's like because if it's not dealt with in childhood, it's like it turns into this in adulthood right it gets worse so it's like mental health issues that go on unche unchecked right so or it could just be talking about when you spiral right so uh, learning to recognize the signs of when you are you know when those bad mental behavior be behavior patterns start to happen and you start to um slip into something that's more difficult to get out of it's like for, it's like um it's like um, being able to, it's like imagine the way they're showing it me is like there's a big black hole. This makes me think of that Griff song. There's a big black hole where my heart used to be and I'm trying to fill it with things I don't need. So maybe you are, maybe you're trying to self-soothe in a way with uh, bad habits. Um, but it's like, imagine there was, you were walking and there was a big black hole in your path. This is making me think of a, a Libra extended reading that Awakening to Spirit did. Um, and you see it coming, right? So it's like, I'm not going to get out of that pit if I go into it exhausted. Right. Maybe you've been on a really long journey. Maybe you've been walking for days, right? And you're exhausted and there's a big pit in front of you. And yes, you can climb in and out of it, right? It's not a bottomless pit with like slippy sides. It's like I could, like a quarry or something. It's like I could go down there and scramble out the other side. But it's like if I go into that quarry right now, if I go into that pit right now in this exhausted state, I'm going to get stuck down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a good night's sleep first. I'm going to pitch my tent. It's funny. Somebody yesterday had stuff about pitching tents. I'm going to pitch my tent. I'm going to get a really good night's sleep. And tomorrow when I wake up refreshed, then I'm going to tackle that big problem, that big pit. Or do you try it right, which is like this, right? And then you have success. Or it's like, do you do you try and do that thing while you're already exhausted and get stuck down the bottom of it and then you have a really bad night's sleep because you know you left you know you did you can't pitch your tent down there and then it's like you've got to try and scramble out the next day so like it feels like an impossible task do you see what i mean so it's like spot the signs early be aware be aware virgo of what you're capable of before committing to it so it's it's kind of like saying don't overload yourself don't overburden yourself and get into this state take the rest take the rest because you can't help anyone when you're like this it's really making me think of this um this post that i just saw i think it was on the dodo um you know the dodo it's like an animal um uh, appreciation society i don't know post um and um it was these two lads like teenage lads or young adult lads i can't tell age um who were kind of exploring this water park uh, it's like an abandoned water park uh, but it'd been raining so a lot of the um the features had filled up with water again so like the pools and things were full of water and they were going around this park and they were like oh look a dog should we go and say hi and it was just this dog kind of like looking at them and then like looking off to the side and then looking at them and then another dog appeared and they were like oh it's another dog and the dogs kind of came over and they were a bit nervous because one of them was kind of like a bulldog looking thing and they were a bit like are they friendly are they not but the dogs were super friendly and they came over and then it was like they were leading them like lassie right they were leading them back over to where they'd originally been so the lads followed and they were like what's that noise there's something in the pool and this other dog this third dog was in the pool doggy paddling right but he couldn't get out and it was you could see it was starting to get exhausted it didn't look like it had been there in there too long but you could see that it would have very 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 quickly run out of energy and um, it would have been a really really sad situation 
but luckily those two lads were there at the right time um and the dog's friends had led the you know led them to him and one of the lads like grabbed this dog and like grabbed you know grabbed its leg and pulled it to the side and heaved it out and this dog like the other two dogs because they were clearly all friends these three dogs they were like so excited that the friend was okay and they were like running around it and like you know when dogs kind of like get either side of the the, the injured dog or like the, the friend so they were like either side of it like jumping on it and licking it and being like are you okay it's just the sweetest thing to see that the how excited these dogs were that their friend had been saved because that could have gone really really badly so it's that kind of thing it's like um, maybe maybe get your friends to help you. Maybe that's what that's saying. Um, now, again, you are keeping something a, a secret. You have this big secret energy. The oyster is really clamming up, right? So maybe clamming up. Maybe maybe it's that feeling of like, I'm going through something here. Because you're so... You always put everybody else first, Virgo. So it could be that energy of like, um, I'm really burdened by something here. I'm really in my head about it. I'm having a really tough time, but I don't want to put my burdens on anyone else, right? It's like, I'm the emperor. I'm, again, take gender out of it. It's like, I'm the emperor. I'm supposed to be this. I'm supposed to be the oak tree. I'm supposed to be the strong one. I'm supposed to be the one that other people can lean on and rely on. Um, you know, I can't fall down because then maybe the whole forest will fall down. You've got that kind of energy. But it's like you've got all like the willow trees coming in and support you is the way I see it. It's not how willow trees and oak trees work, but symbolically for me, that's how I see the trees. Um, so I want to say you should, you should open up about this. The high priestess is telling me this doesn't feel like you. This feels like somebody who knows. This is feel, feels like somebody who has that intuition. Um, they just know how you're feeling. Again, it could be like a grandma. You know, grandmas always tell. Grandmas always know. Like, you can be trying to hide something from your grandma and they'll be like, what's wrong? <laughs> Come and have a cup of tea and talk about it. Because that's how it's looking to me. It's like, it's just looking like grandma, like with the, you know, with the teapot. <laughs> like, not even like a kettle. Like, grandma with the teapot or the plate of cookies. Like, come and sit down let's talk about this so uh that's not for all of you but for some of you but again it feels like it could be part of yourself it could be an intuitive part of yourself that it's like that knows something but you're not saying it because the high priestess often knows but doesn't speak uh, owls could be symbolic for you you've got this owl on the underlying i associate owls with high priestess energy oh and the whale there as well and the cave whoa look at your symbolism I've got a big black hole where my heart used to be, right? And I'm trying to fill it with things I don't need. The whale, big, big secrets, big emotional secrets. The owl, somebody knows. Um, so um, I, I only saw the owl. I didn't know I was going to see the rest of that then. <sighs> so the chariot, the chariot has a feeling of pull yourself together, get yourself back into control, which one is easier said than done. You know, sometimes you need support to be able to do that. Two, sometimes it has to come from within, right? Everybody else can give you all the support in the world, but unless you, it's like, they're showing me like pulling socks on. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps or something like that. It's like, they're showing me pulling socks on. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. What's bootstrap Bill? Is that um, Pirates of the Caribbean? He's got daddy issues, right? Um, bootstrap Bill. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Maybe someone's called Bill. They give me things in funny ways. Maybe someone's called Bill or William. Um, Bill, Will, William. Um, yeah. So what I'm saying there is, yes, it's important to have support. But, for example, if you've got something like an addiction, right? When people have an addiction, they have to want to change. That's what I was saying, guys. That's what I was saying. Again, maybe this is somebody that you're dealing with yourself. Do you remember when I was saying... Um, it's like a child, right? It's like a child and trying to teach them something that they don't want to learn. And it's it becomes torturous. Or, you know, if when somebody has some kind of disability or addiction or something like this, it could be in this case, um, when they have that drive, when they have that, that moment of, I'm going to do this for myself. I'm not going to do this to please my dad. I'm not going to do this to please. Again, take, take the situation as it resonates it's going to be different for different people but it's like uh, what I'm getting is this person who's like really down in the dumps really stuck in their own head they've got these bad patterns of behavior and it's like doing it for other people doing it for 
doing it because they're trying to meet someone else's expectations feels almost like a punishment where doing it because they have the impetus to change they want to succeed it does actually bring them into this feeling of like self self-control and self-empowerment so i don't know if that's something how that applies to you but it's interesting to kind of look at and then again you have this kind of like father and son thing here so again it's got this feeling like just look at the poses so the son the son of pentacles which could be this is a virgo card for me uh but it could be you've got an earth sign son um you could be the son of an earth sign i don't know son of pentacles this is like you've got this advice kind of coming through at the end of the reading it's like it's not going to happen overnight it is something that's going to happen step by step you are going to have to follow in someone else's footsteps here um and when you you've got a feeling i feel like this came out yesterday as well like it's almost like leading each other there's a, there's a specific card that they're showing me let me just get it out Okay, I can't do things fast enough. They give me stuff so fast. So they're giving me Aeneas. Um, um, carrying his father on his shoulder and leading his son by his hand. So you can look that up if you want. Aeneas, A-E-N-E-A-S. Um, I think if I spell it correctly. Um, it's um, a motif from... Uh, it's a ro it's a kind of a Gre Greco Roman motif. Uh, really important to the Romans. Um, it talks about... Um, learning from the past, um, respecting your ancestors, respecting your patronage, um, but also being a modifier, you know, and um, guiding your children or the, the following generations um, in a way where you've learned from past mistakes and you've, you're passing on the past wins kind of thing. It's like, let's improve generationally. Um, but yeah, it's got this kind of like following in each other's footsteps quality to it, you know, with this and this. So Aeneas, um, that's a motif that comes through for Capricorn a lot. So maybe you've got Capricorn placements. Maybe you've got a Capricorn Lilith placement. Um, maybe check that out. I've got Capricorn Lilith and it's like imposter syndrome. Again, maybe you've got a touch of that. It definitely has that feeling. Um, so it's like uh, you don't have to... Oh, maybe that's what it is. It's something... Hang on, what else was I getting before I get into this? I don't know. It's gone. I can't... I can't keep up sometimes with the intuitive messages. So it's got this thing about what they're showing me is like you trying to forge a path, right? Maybe trying to go your own way, trying to forge a path, but it's like you're making it difficult for yourself. Um, <laughs> show me a bulldozer. Um, so it's like it's like you don't always have to do it alone you don't always have to do it your own way you can follow in the footsteps of the people who went before you right the emperors before you so again this could just be people who are like senior in your job uh, people who are more established people who are older than you it's like they've you know they've already been through this so it's like it's going to be easier on you yes some of those thorns will have grown back but if you follow the path that's already been forged by do you see what i'm saying it's like if you follow the path that's already been forged through the difficult times um it's like it, you'll make it easy for yourself there's something like that um okay they're giving me eye of the tiger eye of the tiger like you feel like you are being watched i feel like maybe you do feel like you're being intently watched you feel like you're being judged um by this older character that and that is very much like you know like i sometimes talk about my guides like the dragon guide like that's how that, that is very symbolic of like the, how they feel um okay so i think that's your reading it's like you don't have to make it so difficult for yourself you don't have to be giving me another billy eilish song um something about keep it all inside <laughs> trying to tune into it hold on it's like trying to dial a radio to focus on it is it come out and play show them it show them everything you've kept inside don't hide don't hide too shy to say but i'm on my way don't hide away, come out and play. Yeah, it's Come Out and Play by Billie Eilish. You've got a lot of songs I don't think I'm going to remember to put them all in the description box, I'm afraid. Um, but hopefully you've made a note of them or, look, or paused and looked them up. So I'm getting you advice from this deck. Considering they showed me this deck, I feel like I probably should. So, oh, blessed. Gorgeous. What are you worrying about? You're blessed. And Milk and Honey. Right, you've got some really good advice cards coming out, guys. 
So I feel like you are being your own worst enemy to an extent. And that is not, that's not me giving you a tough time. That's not me adding another weight to your shoulders. It's me saying, wake up, recognize this pattern of behavior, recognize that you do this to yourself and take control of the situation. Get back into your, get back into your full empowered energy, which you can do. You ha everybody has the emperor within, right? It's really just about standing firm, standing tall. Maybe even, right, look in the mirror when you're brushing your teeth in the morning. You know, spit your toothpaste out, wipe your mouth, look in the mirror, do a superhero pose. Do your best superhero pose, right? And really kind of like wink at yourself in the mirror. Imagine you're the sexiest man or woman alive, you know. Is that... Who's that? <laughs> don't know Chris uh, Chris Evans I only know his name because every time someone says Chris Evans I think it's the ginger guy who used to host TGI Friday uh don't forget your toothbrush right I don't know I don't know that's funny that reference it's, it's funny how they give me things sometimes there's something about your toothbrush I don't know don't forget your toothbrush um I give yourself a wink you know cheeky wink and look at Chris Evans right he's not the most he's not the sexiest man alive but um, depending on which Chris Evans you're looking at, I'm talking about the ginger one. He's he's not, you know, objectively speaking, I think generally speaking, he doesn't fit the mold of the perfect, you know, the most attractive, sexy man. But he has a huge amount of charisma that made him quite attractive um, because of that kind of like humor and confidence. So people are attracted to different things and sometimes personality can be more attractive than looks. You could be the best looking person in the room and be boring AF, right? You could have nothing to say. And it's like, oh, they're like a decoration, you know, like they're like a vase. What's that? The Empty Vase by, um, you know, uh, that Monica Geller poem from Friends. Uh, she was like, it's so beautiful. And then she was like, wait, it's so offensive. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but take it if it resonates, leave it if it doesn't. 22. So I don't know, just stop beating yourself up and trying to be perfect, basically. Something wonderful that is unearned and unexpected. Oh my God, didn't I say that? Unearned. Grace that is an unforeseen gift from spirit. Like, don't question it. If something comes your way and you're like, do I deserve this? Am I good enough? Why have I been given this? Stop questioning it. If spirit says it's yours, it's yours, basically. There are, there are moments in life when out of the blue, it seems that everything has been orchestrated by divine intervention. You feel blessed in ways that are difficult to express. It's as if... The Red Sea parts in front of you and events come together to banish your troubles easily and naturally. You know deep down that you did not deserve any of it and yet here you are. This is one of those times. Let awe and gratitude for all your blessings guide you now. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you've had a tough time and it's like spirit is fishing you out. I don't know why I'm seeing it as fishing. Maybe someone's gone fishing. I did have that thing about going to the woods <laughs> in one of the readings. Um, yeah, spirit's fishing you out. So get out of your head about it. Stop asking if you deserve it or not. If spirit says it's yours, it's yours. If you're blessed, you're blessed, right? It doesn't. You don't have to have guilt about it, but you can help others, right? So it's like, say for example, I don't know, say you come from a wealthy family and you're very privileged and doors have opened for you a lot more easily than other people. You know, you've, you've got some inheritance. You've got all these blessings, right? You recognize that you're in a in a position that a lot of people are not in, you, you know, maybe for some of you, maybe not for all of you. It's one of the storylines that's, it's one of the threads I'm pulling on basically. So you feel like you're in a privileged position and there's other people who perhaps have envy about that, or perhaps you can see that they're having a much harder time. So it's not about beating yourself up for having, for being blessed. It's saying, what can you do with that blessed position? Shush phone. Maybe there's something in communication that you can do. How can you forge the path ahead for other people to follow, right? How can you be the mighty oak in the forest, um, you know, supporting all that life? Um, how can you stand tall and stand firm and in, in your own power with the chariot? So that, you know, so that the next generation can follow. So maybe it's like a work thing for some of you. How can you pass the blessings on? How can you pay it forward? Okay, do we have any more advice for Virgo? Is that it? No, <laughs> told you, Owl. What did I say? Guys, she knows. My cards are so good. Uh, okay, you see clearly now. You can see clearly now. The thorns have gone. 
There are no more obstacles in your way. Sorry, I don't know why I'm like this. Why am I picking up my phone? Maybe they want me to get a song, because I am singing. <laughs> Maybe they just want me to stop singing and get a song from Spotify. Can we get a song for Virgo? Song for Virgo. What do they see clearly? Give them a light bulb moment. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Grape tree. I've got an advert for Grape tree. It was... Uh, what is it? Short skirt and long jacket by Cake. Short skirt, long jacket. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. I, I should stop singing. Right, I'm reading the words. I want a girl with a mind like a diamond. I want a girl who knows what's best. I want a girl with shoes that cut and eyes that burn like cigarettes. I want a girl that, with the right allocations who's fast and thorough and sharp as a tack. She's playing with the jewellery. She's putting up her hair. She's touring the facility and picking up slack. I want a girl with a short skirt and long jacket. Um, I want a girl who gets up early. I want a girl who stays up late. I want a girl with uninterrupted prosperity who uses a machete to cut through red tape that's funny they're showing me uh bone hilda <laughs> um so um if you don't know who bone hilda is um a lot of you know that i love the sims the computer game the sims and um one of the characters is bone hilda she's like a skeleton maid um, and i made her playable and i took her to the jungle where you have to cut through <laughs> You have to cut through brambles to get like access different areas with a machete. So they... <laughs> my guides are funny. Um, okay, <laughs> it's like Bone Hilda, everybody's dream girl. Um, um, with fingernails that shine like justice and a voice that is dark like tinted glass. She's fast, thorough, and sharp as attack. She's torrent yet, yeah, and then so it's basically it's basically. It's a bit of a parody song. It's a bit of a joke song because it's talking about a guy who wants the perfect girl, right? And if you watched Aries reading, you know that the idea of perfection is uh, fleeting and um, not sustainable. <laughs> um, so again, if you don't know, go and watch Aries' reading. It was a vibe. Um, and um, yeah, they had the song by Madison Beer, um, Build a Bish. Um, this ain't build a bish. You don't get to pick or choose bigger ass or bigger boobs. Are my eyes brown or blue? This ain't build a bish. So yeah, it's like again, it's this thing about I don't know other people's expectations on you to be perfect when the idea of perfection is um, is conflicting. It's um, it's impossible because. It's asking the impossible of, of people. I want a girl who gets up early and stays up late. I want it to be sexy, but I want it to be demure. So it's this impossible standard that that is placed upon us as women. Uh, but, you know, this also applies to men as well because you, you've got a very paternal reading. So again, maybe it's your parents' expectations of you. It's like, you know, go out and have some fun, work hard. And you're like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> like, you're giving me conflicting advice here. Like, what is, ugh, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's so easy to demand things of others where to actually achieve that or to sustain that is much, much more difficult in practice. And I think if people, I don't know. And it comes more easily for some than others. Again, to do with like the way that your brain's wired. Some people are super organized by by nature and habit. Some people, like me, hi, are completely disorganized. Uh, you know, it's an effort for me to be organized. I can be organized. I can be organized, to be fair. But it's like, it takes up all my focus. I have to be 100% into whatever I'm doing. So, um, yeah, you see clearly now, and it is something around ideas of perfection whether this is ideas of perfection that you're placing on other people or you know trying to live up to the expectations of others and to to be perfect it's 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 false it's fleeting it's conflicting it's transitory transitory is that the word okay let's get you oh, let's get you the book 43 when this reading goes up, I'm probably going to be slaving away in a kitchen. Um, Owl Spirit arrives, arrives to remind you that the wisdom within you is informed by your keen senses and the wisdom within the consciousness we all share. And again, you do have this in your reading. This is part of your energy, right? The High Priestess. Even in the darkest night, oh, the darkest night, even in the darkest night, the owl sees clearly in his deep and is guided by every sense it has, including the first sense of intuition. Right now, your sensitivities are turbocharged and you are receiving messages from all directions. Didn't that happen to me? I was forgetting the messages because they were coming so quickly that my mouth couldn't keep up. 
Um, Owl Spirit reminds you to be wise and pay attention to what's between the lines, what is invisible to the naked eye and what cannot be heard with the ears and what others may not be able to perceive. With all your senses aroused, you have much knowledge available to you. Clarity will come as you sit with all that you are sensing, allowing your intuition to guide you in understanding the whole and not just the parts. Let your wisdom arise and be your guide as you trust the acuity of all your senses. Intuition is real and can provide the clarity you need to understand your situation right now. Your relationship, your finances, your job, whatever it is, you can see the truth clearly now. And I've just dropped the book. Maybe that's significant for somebody. Okay. I'm also going to get you a little totem, a little mo motif. So uh, obviously take that song, uh, Cake, Long... Uh, what is it short skirt long jacket that's going to be your song for the week so watch out for i don't know people wearing short skirts and long jackets particularly particularly right okay there's something about female clothing and female sexuality and the perception especially going into libra's reading which i know libra's had some of this recently um so short skirt, long jacket. It's like if you wear a short skirt, people make assumptions about you that may or may not be true. It's a piece of clothing, guys. You know, um, you also had in that song, um, I don't want to be you anymore. There's a line that says um, wearing a tight dress makes you a lady of the night. So, um, yeah, it's like uh, people judging people by how they dress, people judging people by how, you know, it's reminding me as well of that. Yeah, you're getting a lot of Libra coming in now. I mean, Libra's my next reading. But if you go back and look at Libra's reading um, last week, they had um, Not My Responsibility by Billie Eilish. Your perception of me, what, how you, how, what you think of me is a projection of me. It's not actually who I am, right? It's like based on your own, um, your own imprint, your own blueprints, your own ideas and your own societal beliefs like uh it's not my responsibility what you think of me if i wear a tight dress or a short skirt so um yeah, which is so funny because i think i saw i saw somebody who's libra who literally said the same thing i think it was doja cat she, she like a, a few days after i did that reading doja cat posted something really similar it's like it's not my responsibility what you think of me and i was like libra hype <laughs> it's just really nice when i see things actually playing out so not my responsibility um so yeah i don't know the desert so watch out for the desert or the dessert <laughs> um yeah that's your motif that's your totem for the week the desert dry spell perhaps i don't know uh take care of yourselves i hope that was really really helpful for you uh get out of your own fucking heads virgos <laughs> drop some of those burdens and take a rest you deserve it I tell you this every single week and you go around in circles and never fucking learn you exhausting virgos loving virgos is exhausting because it's like they want what's best for you you want what's best for them they try too hard you want to go to bed and sleep <laughs> you're like come on to bed and sleep <laughs> i don't know it's like like Virgo, take a break. <laughs> You're exhausting me. I don't know. Take it as it resonates. Leave it if it doesn't. And I will see you again soon. Bye, friends.